Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleague, Jim Patterson. Jim will be today's presenter and will discuss the topic of redefining enterprise work management, all new Microsoft Planner and OnePlan. This webinar is a new addition to our series of adaptive webinars, so if you enjoy this video, feel free to watch the others we have available on our channel and look towards the next installment, which we'll be releasing soon. And as always, I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management and gets you excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Thank you again. I will now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thanks, Robert, and welcome, everybody. We um, are excited to bring you this topic here today. Um, you may or may not know that you know, Microsoft is evolving what it is doing in the areas of project and work management. And we're going to talk to here today about what some of those things are from a Microsoft perspective, as well as on what one plan brings to the party to bring enterprise work management uh, into the Microsoft Cloud. Um, so today's topic of redefining enterprise work management with the new Microsoft Planner and One Plan, uh, we're going to go through a little progression of how we got there. So let's get started. So for those of you that are Microsoft Project users and have used other work management tools within the Microsoft Cloud, there's been a you know previous set of evolutions that have happened over time. You know, at one point. Uh, really not all that long ago, uh, the only thing that was really out there to do project management from a Microsoft perspective was Microsoft Project and Microsoft Project Professional on the desktop. It really became the de facto standard for project scheduling out there in the marketplace. It had a much larger footprint than any other dedicated scheduling tool out there in the marketplace. And the only thing that really seemed to compete with it in a big way was Excel, actually. But it did so many things from a scheduling perspective with a scheduling engine and dependencies and a lot of advanced features that seasoned project managers would use that it became a very popular in its use. Then, you know, people were using this on the desktop only at one point and really need, had the need to manage entire portfolios of projects. And hence, you know, tying that in and extending that to a server-based or cloud-based solution, which was originally project server, which was on your own servers, but then Ultimately, the whole world moved towards Project Online, which was the cloud-based portfolio management or PPM solution based on Microsoft Project on the desktop. It extended you beyond individual schedules into looking at entire portfolios and additional things like aggregated resources and those types of things. And that has been the de facto standard for project and portfolio management in the Microsoft world for a couple decades now. Now, not everybody out there that's managing projects and work is a seasoned, trained, dedicated project manager uh, with all the disciplines and knowledge and skills that are required for that. And so Microsoft came out with Office 365, uh, you know, Microsoft Planner. And Planner was designed to do simple task management in a Kanban style primarily, so that people could actually log the things they're supposed to work on, track their status, move them through different things, categorize the work, et cetera, and provide simple updatings that teams could do on that. Now, that was you know, all well and good, but managing tasks and just moving them through a pipeline or a Kanban board isn't enough for many people that still need simplified project management in a more modern context like that, but have more things to, um, to accommodate. So what there really has been is this: there was this gap between what was offered by Microsoft Project and Project Online on the desktop and the, what was offered in Planner. And that gap was filled by Microsoft's Project for the Web. It was designed to be something between there. So if you look at it from the lens of a planner user, it provided additional capabilities like, you know, Gantt charts and be able to manage dependencies between tasks and be able to allocate and quantify resource values on those tasks rather than just tagging resource names to those things, et cetera. And what it did was give people that need to do basic project management but didn't need all the advanced capabilities of Microsoft Project on the desktop, it gave them that. And it provided us the ability to do things in a, in a browser, uh, in a modern UI experience, and be able to manage our projects that way. So that's been the landscape now since uh, this was first announced in you know, late 2019. So for about 2020 on, this has been what's been available, you know, but uh, both of these things have still been available, Microsoft Projects on the Desktop or Project Online and Project for the Web. Now, as we go through that, that, you know, the work management tools and task management stuff that's available from Microsoft has just, you know, grown over the years. You know, in Office 365, there's 
things we can do in teams, not only with Planner, but with To-Do and Outlook and SharePoint and task apps that we have in there, and lists and that, that type of thing. In, you know, the power apps, you know, there's, you know, the things that we can do in building our own individual power apps for work items. There's in Azure DevOps, there's Azure boards that we can manage those more agile type of projects within a, a board fashion like that. In project, as I've mentioned, we delineated between project desktop and project for the web. And even in dynamics, they've extended that to more project uh, for professional services or organizations to more project operations meaning there's, there could be tasks everywhere in different silos or pockets of information, even within the Microsoft Cloud. Now, primarily, Microsoft has taken a look at the world and where they've been and where they've, where they've been at and looked at the market landscape and uh, decided that uh, they were going to pursue things in a different fashion. There was first collaborative work management, which is kind of that lighter weight uh, collaborative task and work management that happens often within teams or within organizations within a limited set, you know, uh, you know, uh, sphere. And so, you know, be able to do something that's easy for business users and informal project managers. There's the informal task management and individual task management. There's team projects. There's be able to do Kanban, you know, look at maybe team workloads as far as tasks, maybe some dependencies, maybe some issues and risks, et cetera but not all the things that complex projects might require. And that collaborative work management, you know, touches a lot of people in an organization that maybe don't even call themselves project managers in that regard. And collaborative work management is the direction that Microsoft is investing in. It all started when really they were doing the project for the web piece to augment, you know, what was happening with Planner. Now, the other part of the market landscape is enterprise work and project management. And this is where professional project managers come in. This is where your PMOs and your EPMOs, this is where your executive teams want visibility into entire portfolios and some analytics and things like that to make decisions. Um, so advanced portfolio management, you know, kind of resource capacity planning across the organization, maybe even doing objectives and key results, you know, from a strategic alignment perspective out there and strategic execution. And then there's things like advanced scheduling and cost management, financials, and just advanced reporting you're going to need at that portfolio level. And this is what Microsoft was addressing with Project Online. The Project Online is still there, but they announced back in 2019 that they were ceasing, and they have ceased, development into Project Online and into this marketplace. And they're really focused in this direction, as we're going to talk about today, into the collaborative work management space. So the state of collaborative work management and Microsoft's assessment was this. They did some own, uh, their own surveys out there, and they found that the respondents said that 59% of employees say their collaboration tools are not aligned with how they work, meaning the tools that they've been given were not conducive to the way or the method in which they would want to do work and interact with others. 64% of employees say current tools don't integrate with their organization's processes, so there's a disconnect that sometimes people have to shoehorn them or force fit that in in order to make it work, usually with some manual intervention. And 72% of employees wish their collaboration tools were compatible with one another, meaning that they weren't separate and distinct and you didn't have to mash up data manually or semi-manually to make those things happen. And then the analysts out there like Gartner are saying things like collaborative work management empowers business users to plan, carry out and manage their work, not just dedicated project managers. CWM or collaborative work management tools are a natural complement to work stream collaboration, visual collaboration tools and meeting solutions. So comments like this and findings like this are where, uh, why Microsoft has decided to put their emphasis into the collaborative work management space. So Microsoft's project management vision, and this was basically, you know, um, enumerated or elaborated back in late 2019. And at that point, the goal was to for teams to be able to work the way they want, you know, the methods and the tools and, that and such that they want to use. But also for enterprise still get the results that they need. So leadership gets the information they need. The PMOs and EPMOs get the information they need. And that was the vision and is the vision of where Microsoft is going. So if we think about what was called really the task management hub of things, where we talked about Microsoft Project for the Web and Planner, and Microsoft To Do, which was a place where we could actually capture to dos and action items in other ways, and actually brought those things together in the initial consolidation of tools where, if you look in Teams, the availability of this tool that combines To Do and Planner is called Tasks by Planner and To Do, to bring that all into one place where you could use Planner 
and other individual to-dos and things that were created, even things like flagged emails and things like that were brought into place so that you could manage a whole variety of tasks in one common hub. And then Microsoft Project for the Web was still there for that informal project manager that needed project management and scheduling capabilities. Now, the next stage of consolidation, and that's what was just announced at Ignite by Microsoft at their conference just here in November. And in this particular case, this next level of consolidation is basically going to combine them all. And in that, they announced the new Microsoft Planner for one simple, familiar experience for task and project management, meaning the capabilities of Planner, To Do, and Microsoft Project for the Web are being formulated into one tool called Planner. So the idea here was to manage all your tasks and plans in one simple, familiar experience within that planner environment, in that planner user experience. In this case, they want it to be simple, like we talked about. Maybe the people that just you know, were intimidated or didn't have the use for all the capabilities within Microsoft Project Professional on the desktop. You know, manage all your work in one place and keep that simple. Don't have multiple places to go. Flexible, work the way you want. You know, do you want to work in an agile fashion, a more, you know, pure Kanban? Do you want to work in a more traditional Gantt chart um, mode with scheduling? Up to you. Scalable, be able to pull all those things together, both your bigger plans, say, in Project for the Web, and maybe your smaller plans and planner, being, bring them all together into one, uh, one tool. And then intelligent, as we're going to see here in a little bit, you know, Microsoft's foray into uh, artificial intelligence. Um, and you've probably seen a lot of their um, uh, advertising and messaging around Copilot and how it's going to permeate all through the Microsoft ecosystem. Now, that's also true for Planner. So let's talk about that and, and, and look at a video that Microsoft put out to give you the basics of what this new Planner is. Um, it's really slated to come out in the spring, uh, I believe April timeframe of 2024. And with that, I would like to start that video and have you take, a, take an initial look. The new Planner app in Microsoft Teams, coming in early 2024, allows you to see all of your work across Microsoft 365 in a single location. Keeping intelligence at its core, Planner also includes the power of AI with new Copilot features to help you get started and stay on top of all of your work. In Planner, you have the freedom to create different types of plans based on the complexity of your projects. Start with a basic plan for your simple projects using the Planner experience included in Microsoft 365, or create a premium plan for enhanced project management capabilities like task dependencies, goal setting, and additional customizations. Get started using one of the templates like project budget, sprint retrospective, or goals and objectives, or start with a blank plan to create any plan that you need. For now, let's start with a basic plan just for yourself. Here, you can plan out your own work, like a career plan or a personal to-do list, or start drafting work for an upcoming team project, like a marketing campaign. All of the tasks are visible in the different views. Grid view to see tasks in a simple list, Board view to see tasks grouped by different fields. Schedule view to see when each task will be worked on. Or charts view to get a quick understanding of your plan's progress. When you need to share with others, you can easily do so by adding team members to the plan. Or if you have an existing group, simply add that group. Once the plan is shared, it's simple to assign work to the correct people so everyone can quickly get started on their tasks. The Planner app in Microsoft Teams is designed to grow with you. So if you discover that you need additional functionality beyond what's offered in a basic plan, it's easy to try out premium features. In just a few clicks, you can get started using a premium template and get access to all premium capabilities. With premium plans, you also have access to the power of AI with Copilot, which can help you save time by creating relevant tasks quickly. Simply tell Copilot what you would like to accomplish and it will add a set of tasks to your plan. Premium plans also give you access to a range of advanced project management capabilities, like goal setting, so everyone knows what you are working towards and how their work will have impact. 
You can also set dependencies between your tasks and see the full timeline for your project in a Gantt chart format, which includes the critical path for your plan. Organize your tasks into sprints to manage work in an agile way. Easily load balance work across your team using people view. And customize your plan by adding custom fields to tasks, conditional coloring on the grid view, and even set custom working calendars so tasks are only scheduled on the days you work. You can easily find any of your plans in the My Plans page, where all of your plans will be organized for easy access. For even quicker discovery, pin your favorite plans so you can open them from anywhere within the app. You can also quickly see all the work that is assigned to you by heading to the My Tasks page, where there is a list of tasks you are responsible for, no matter where they were assigned to you in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Finally, use the My Day view to stay focused on what you need to accomplish today. Here, you will see any tasks that are due the same day, along with any tasks that you choose to add, so you remember to stay focused on them. And for frontline organizations, Planner offers task publishing to centrally define tasks, quickly distribute work at scale, and monitor results across your organization. To learn more about how Planner can help serve frontline organizations, visit aka.ms slash task publishing in Planner. Using the new power of Copilot to get started on a new project faster than ever, and with all of your tasks in one place, it's never been easier to stay organized and on top of your work. Whether you need simple task management tools or advanced project management capabilities, Planner is the one-stop shop for organization and collaboration. Well, great. Well, hopefully that gave you a uh, initial foray into what's coming. And as I go to share my screen again, um, you'll see that, you know, the convergence of all the things that are in there and the delineation between what we knew as uh, planner capabilities in the basic planner license that you still get, plus the premium that adds in the mix of uh, Project for the web, as well as adding the co-pilot capabilities in there are ways that you can converge that, but it would all be within the same UI within the planner sphere. So with that, let's talk about the future of project and portfolio management. If we're looking at collaborative work management, which is most of that was focused on, let's take a look at you know, what's gonna be available using the Microsoft Cloud in that platform with all the things that come with it, the secure access and all the compliance and things that's available with that. So for example, in this collaborative work management world, this is where the planner, the focus of the new planner will be. And we see that you know, new colored logo for planner right there. And this really is done through Office 365, combination of what was project for the web will be folded into that. And then planner will be in there. And that whole uh, idea of, uh, you know, updating these things together, you know, um, uh, tasks for planner and to do are all part of what you can do in teams today. And it's adding that project for the web into the mix. And their vision is to get more uh, task management work items into that mix as well as it goes on. Now, many people, you know, have needs to go beyond what's in collaborative work management. And to that degree, you know, traditional PPM capabilities are available to you through Project Online. And I've got to grade out a little bit here because it's not being invested in any longer. It will eventually not be here. Uh, the idea is the move is into the more modern tool sets, but it is here today and it will be here for the, for, for the you know, foreseeable near future. But OnePlan does a couple things. It provides you all the OnePlan uh, PPM capabilities right within the Microsoft Cloud. It also allows you to connect to things that you're doing with uh, uh, Project Online and really provide even capabilities beyond Project Online such that when Project Online ever does get retired, you have a project and portfolio management solution that is viable and tied to the other tools within that mix uh, to take over uh, at that point in time. So it kind of future proofs you as well as provide you with uh, capabilities today. Now, the analysts like Gardner talk about this new realm called strategic portfolio management or SPM. And a lot of this has to do with elevating organizations to be to more of an enterprise PMO focus to where they're 
looking at enterprise-wide transformations and other things that require all aspects of the business and visibility in there to make sure that all the things that strategically align where leadership wants the organization to go, that they're all being factored in, right? And they're all being aligned with one another and associated with one another. So strategic alignment is important, as well as all the other things you might factor in. There might be other portfolios like product portfolios. There might be application portfolios. There might be uh, portfolios of business capabilities, or maybe you might be organized into value streams. The alignment with all those things are needed to do full strategic portfolio management, where the analysts like Gartner and Forrester are saying many organizations need to go moving into the future. And one plan provides that fully uh, tied into the Microsoft Cloud and Tools. So if we think about this, you know, the one plan platform complements a complete set of capabilities. Let's just say with the new project for the web, that it is really good at providing you projects and tasks and assign resource to tasks and putting dependencies in and those types of things. And has native reporting through Power BI and the Power Platform. Well, that's all well and good. And there may be strategy that might come from Viva Goals in the Microsoft Viva Suite, right? But if you really want to extend this to full PPM capabilities and People have different variations of gradation of how mature they need to get on this. But the things that you're going to require on top of those things is, yes, strategy, but that strategy then needs to be aligned with your entire portfolio. Project requests and intake to basically allow you to uh, have a funnel of work that comes in in a vetting process. When I talk about portfolio management, we're talking about advanced portfolio management with things like what if analysis, et cetera. You know, aggregating like projects on a same, similar work stream into programs and be able to do advanced prioritization, detailed financial tracking, resource capacity planning, and all the other things on the execution side like issues, risks, changes, status reports, governance, KPIs around, uh, around your uh, project portfolio. And then you have the whole idea of my work and especially many organizations need to have a timesheet, whether it be for capitalization of dollars or of labor, whether it be for charging back within an organization or billing of external clients or things that might be needed. And those are things that one plan brings to the mix along with in conjunction in tandem with Project for the Web. Now, it doesn't stop there. What the, what the, the analysts are calling adaptive portfolio and project management is really about a mixture of methodologies, agile, waterfall, hybrids, as well as different tool sets, that tool of choice, you know, uh, teams work the way they want. So where uh, Microsoft's offering is really focused on the project management side within, you know, Project for the Web and Planner, there are still people that have the needs for the advanced capabilities of Microsoft Project Professional on the desktop. There's some that are using agile tools within the Microsoft Cloud like Azure DevOps, or even other tools at CERNL, like things like Jira and Smartsheet are, have to be maybe folded into this um, at, at some point. The idea is that one plan has the built-in connectors to bring that data in and allow you to use this variety of tools, yet have it all come together in a common hub so it is no longer isolated, fragmented silos of data. If we take that the next step further, because one plan is already doing that with Planner and Project for the Web, we are already ready for the launch of New Planner. Uh, and the New Planner would fit into this mix, which would incorporate the, uh, the aspects of Project for the Web and of Planner itself. So the idea here is, is that it's ready for, uh, for this now, but uh, is ready to go with the current state of the products uh, out of the box. So if we look at what we mean by additional capabilities that one plan would bring to the mix and augment and layer onto the new planner, the intake side of things, we have strategies that can be developed and OKRs. They can be derived from what you might be using in Viva Goals, but then it takes it the next step further and allows us to use it on the execution side as well, but also to align with our projects and other elements so we have full strategic alignment to everything else that's going on in our SPM or our SPM methodology. An enterprise architecture for other portfolios, like I mentioned, products, projects, applications, um, um, value streams, business capabilities, et cetera. And even ideation and requests so that you have a funnel of things that are coming in and ideas that can be vetted in eventually promoted into projects in a seamless fashion. When we're selecting the work that we want to do, we need full portfolio visibility. So we have active tracking and KPIs and measurements and metrics on your entire portfolio or portfolios of projects and initiatives. We have different views. You could have more Kanban views of the portfolios as well as roadmap views for the more product and delivery oriented types of folks. 
capacity planning to look at what the resource demand and our ability to fulfill and where over and under capacity is at any given point in time. Financial planning and tracking at a very detailed level on a time phase basis to track uh, finances in the way that you need to potentially to buy play with your financial system. And then there's the what if scenario modeling, be able to evaluate alternatives in this rapidly changing world, be able to evaluate what's next and what courses we should take as situations change that we face. Now, once we decide what we're going to do to execute on, to have the plans in there, one plan has the facilities to bring in from other tools and or plan right within it itself, the ability to do more traditional waterfall work plans as well as more agile plans and backlogs and sprint plans. But bringing in with connectors from a variety of different tool sets, being able to derive those in a more of an adaptive fashion, to be able to bring that in into this hub and roll up into that portfolio is something that uh, one plan really excels at. Even the uh, uh, other aspects that you might track around the execution, like issues, risk, changes, etc. Now, resource planning at an individual execution level, you have to plan the resource allocations within your individual plans. And there may even be resource negotiation that's facilitated within one plan between the project managers and the resource managers who have to understand and negotiate, hey, this is what I need and this is who I can give you to do it and be able to fulfill on those things as you need to. The team members themselves that get assigned work in that resource planning have need the ability to um, um, provide status and updates across all of it, as well as potentially do timesheets and a fully integrated timesheet with approval processes and having that funnel back as actuals back into your plans and rolling up into your portfolio is something that's a strength of one plan. On the analysis side, status reports that are a natural output of the process instead of you building them manually each and every reporting period. Dashboards at either the portfolio levels, at the program levels, at the project levels, even at the individual user or task levels is available to you in Power BI with standard report packs. And then the visualizations, as I talked about all the things that need to interrelate, whether they be strategies aligning with projects or um, uh, projects aligning with one another, uh, but having those graphical visualizations to see how everything in, interrelates and what's depending on what is a very good strength, not only while you're executing, but also while you're deciding what to do and what not to do. Ultimately, the outcomes is what it's all about. And what we're going to deliver is what we need to do in an effective fashion. Now, with the advent of AI, uh, one plan has initiated its own one uh, AI facility that leverages Microsoft's uh, open AI in Azure. And we call it Sophia GPT and allows us to help us with our decision making and other things as we'll talk a little bit about in a minute. But the idea here on the upfront part is to select the right work. Let's make sure we're working on the right things and then ultimately do the work well and do the right, uh, do the work right and have great delivery and great outcomes at the end of the day and deliver value. So those connectors that we talked about, um, this is not custom one-off integrations that are being coded. This is a productized platform in one plan that allows us to integrate with a variety of tools, the agile tools in software development world, the other work management tools, your financial and ERP systems, uh, ideation systems you might have, CRM systems you might have that might be your intake, service management systems, et cetera. So be aware that this whole idea of adaptive goes beyond just the schedules themselves and bringing them in, but bringing data in from other solutions or providing data to other solutions as part of a fully integrated solution. And outside of data integration, one plan in the Microsoft Cloud has a few strategy that allows you to work in the tools you work in every day. Now, we're going to show you one plan working in the browser today primarily, but it's designed such that if you are working within Power Apps and you can actually surface one plan and its capabilities right within the Power Apps that you've developed. And uh, one plan actually developed a one plan uh, Power Apps accelerator uh, for Project for the Web. Uh, it is also, one plan is, an authorized Microsoft Teams application. So you can actually add it to any team or channel, as well as access it in general right within Teams in that left navigation pane. We also uh, fuse it into the use of Azure DevOps, meaning you can, um, uh, while you're in Azure DevOps, use the one plan capabilities without leaving Azure DevOps, and also in Dynamics and in SharePoint. So the types of things that we're doing is a user experience fusing so that we don't have to do task switching and switch from applications as frequently as you used to. Now, when I mentioned Sophia GPT, you know, we think about this as, you know, it's very early stages in, in, in the development of AI, but it's AI as a collaborator. And we use Sophia to understand natural language and responds in real time and helps us with analysis, helps us with 
uh, data, plan building, et cetera. But it also not only leverages all as it learned and its knowledge out in uh, Azure Open AI, but it also, we've taught it everything about one plan and what it does as a product. And also in the current view that you're in, it will leverage the data that you have in there to help you do more analysis, reach some conclusions, and also maybe get some direction on alternatives that you might want to evaluate. The idea here is, is that it provides you that assistant right while you're in one plan, uh, not just you know when you're in the Microsoft uh, tools like uh, Office 365 themselves. So with that, I thought I'd go to a demonstration. Let's just start with a user coming into one plan in the browser here. And we're looking at a home page. And what you see on the home page may vary depending on your role. But in this case, Daniel Williams has some insights on things that require his attention within the system. He has ready access to all the plans that he has available to him that he can get to without having to go through a large portfolio of projects so he can get to the plans that he wants to at any given point in time. As well as we do have conversation threads that may be happening on individual tasks or on resource assignments or on the project plans themselves that he can get to the whole roster of the most recent ones here very quickly and drill into the more detailed threads at any given point in time. And as you got things that are coming due, they can show up here for you so you can see them on your plate as you're, as you're looking to get uh, have that go forward. So the idea there is, is that there's a hub where anybody can go depending on their role and work on things that they need to work on. Now, we talked about the upfront funnel and ideas and requests. You know, one plan provides us the opportunity to have a funnel for ideas and requests that allows us to you know, vet them, uh, put a prioritization mechanism in place and do some selection. And within that, I could actually have you know, a detailed form that allows me to capture the data that you want to have captured and a process and flow for approval that you'd go through to put things like the characterizations of the type of project it is and uh, you know, what categories they're in, narratives on business case that you might put in place even things like the financials that might be required, what prioritization mechanism you're using, maybe more business driver prioritization that calculates a score, maybe more agile approaches like weighted shortest job first that provides a, a weighted shortest job for first or WSGIF score. And even as I talked about the associations, maybe aligning with different other things like this one might be uh, 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 aligned with a particular strategy or a key result in the OKRs in that particular case that we need to factor in. And as we look at this, we could also look at any given point in time at how this relates if we have those associations. So, for example, I can see that there's no dependencies, uh, predecessor successor wise to this, but we've modeled the fact that this uh, idea would flow back and support this key result, which is going to support this strategy. And there is actually a product that is probably related to that that we need to factor in to consider. So, once again, a very simple case of those associations taking place. Now, if I go to my portfolio and I go to look at uh, one plan in that context, uh, looking at a portfolio of projects in here, uh, there's a couple things. One is we have this concept in here of plan types. And if you look in here, um, we put a plan type hierarchy in here. And this is configurable by the way that you look at the world. Uh, I've got portfolios. And in this case, I'm showing multiple portfolios here at the highest level uh, that represent different areas of the business. We might have programs within those portfolios in this case. And then we might have projects and epics below those. Projects may be indicating more waterfallish type of projects and epics may be indicating more agile oriented type of projects. And the idea there is, is that plan type hierarchy is structured for you so that you don't have to have all the same type of projects or have a one size fits all world where, where those things are, are happening the same way if the projects have different needs or the plan types have different needs. Now, if you also notice here, as I open up within this portfolio and then within this program, I have a number of different projects and epics in here. You probably notice that there's a bunch of icons over to the left-hand side. These icons basically tell me what tools I might be connected to outside of one plan. Some I have, I'm connected to just a team site for content and collaboration. This one, I'm actually connected to Microsoft Planner. This one, I'm connected to Azure DevOps. This one, I'm connected to uh, Microsoft Project Professional. And you can see that some of them are not connected to planning tools, meaning they might be doing the planning right here within one plan. So you have the options and the flexibility and the mix to use the tools that you need and see fit to do that. So here in particular, I'm looking at a view that is basically organized by that primary plan type hierarchy that I put in place. 
But I could also have flexibilities in here where, for example, if I went in and looked at a schedule summary and I strip out the hierarchical layers on all these plans, I can come in here and actually look at this in a variety of other ways. For example, in this, I could say, uh, I could look at it with or without timelines. I could come in here and say, let me look at a, um, oh, let's just say a, a summary view of, um, of, of this portfolio that would allow me to look at just a list of projects and be able to layer in. Remember I talked about you could categorize these projects the way you want. Let's say, for example, I just wanted to look at this instead of by the primary hierarchy. Let's just say I wanted a business unit view. And I wanted to see all the things that I was doing in the applications area uh, here within the project. Or, for example, I had these things maybe categorized by, um, um, uh, by who the manager is or the project manager is. And I wanted to be able to go very quickly and look, and I can either group and or filter on these things where I can go and look and say, okay, let me take a look at all of Austin Abrams' projects and see what he's doing and how those are doing. And we have some reds in there that we might want to address. So the key there is, is that you have flexible views for the portfolio and the columns of data you'd like to show. We also at the portfolio level have board views, and those board views allow us to structure this in a variety of flexible fashions as well. In this case, I'm looking at a board by the state, meaning proposed, active, closed, or on hold. They're color-coded by how they're doing, whether they're at risk or they're on track or basically off track in the red. Um, and I can look at these in a variety of different ways. You know, on the board, I could look at this, um, maybe not by status, but maybe I could say, let me look at the board by business unit. And if I look at it by business unit, now I'm looking at the different business units, and I can more readily see the strings or dependencies that are going to and from uh, each of these areas. And I can also see on the ones that are red, I can go here and see that there's um, uh, uh, possibly something I need to drill into. And at any given point in time, you're not going to see the full picture on a card, but you can also invoke a quick edit capability to look at the details around that and get to all the aspects and all the data elements about that particular project at a glance, even to get down to things like the individual detailed schedules and other things like that that you might want to get to. Um, and the other thing is you could add swim lanes in here. So, for example, if I was going to add a swim lane and I was going to do this by, say, goals, now all of a sudden... I'm looking at the same type of thing, but now I've got the customer satisfaction goal here, and I've got the ones in the grill to business goal, and look in very flexible ways. So you're only limited by your imagination, really, in the ways that you would look at these things. And I'd say very quickly, the same thing holds true with our roadmap views. So I can look at roadmap views, hear that this is grouped by the different, where the swim lanes or the swim lanes are actually business units in here. I'm actually showing program increments up here quarterly about when we're gonna deliver some of these things as, as enhancements. Um, and I can even view these things and look at something a little differently where I might say, oh, I don't know, let's look at it by uh, category of project. Let's say we have uh, some other type of categorization. And now you can see they get a roadmap looking at different way and also showing the dependencies between these different elements. Now, as I go down here, I could also, from any portfolio view, I can drill into any particular project plan. So, for example, here, if I wanted to drill into the details of a particular project that I see here in the roadmap, just like we had in the ideas area in this work planner, I got an ideas page that allows me, and you can structure these the way you want, and very with drag and drop capability, um, set up the sections, the fields of data you want to track, the categorizations you want, the narrative that might even come over from the idea business case as you promoted that, uh, et cetera. Uh, all the data that you might want around that, including things like trending and such, all available here in one place. And then ultimately, you know, there's the work plans. So the work plan within this particular plan or project, if I look in here and I look at a schedule, we also have the concept of what we call work types, just like we have plan types at the portfolio level. In this particular case, I got schedule for more waterfall planning. I got a backlog work type for more agile planning. Then I've got a place for issues, risks, changes, and key decisions. People even add, add things in here like uh, lessons learned, assumptions, requirements, other things like that that they might want to have as work types as well. But notice here in the schedule work type, you know, we can look at these things, you know, with or without a Gantt chart, et cetera. And we have the option to either build them in here or build them from templates. But in this particular case, I just want to show that you also have the option. In this case, the connectors we've enabled in this environment are for Project Professional. Microsoft Planner, Project for the Web, and for Smartsheet, meaning we could bring in and derive this plan, would look the same in one plan, but the idea of the source of that data could be coming from another plan from another source as, as we go through that process. 
We also have the ability to do resource planning. So resource capacity planning within here. We have financial planning to be able to do financial tracking on a very detailed level with your cost category structure and time phasing. And be able to track things like budgets, forecasts, actuals, benefits, et cetera. And maybe even compare those things and how we're doing on say about say budget versus revised forecast and be able to look at how those things are tracking. Um, the other piece is the reporting side. So as we look at this, you know, having status reports that are a natural output of the process where that you don't have to build, that it will populate yet leave you room for narrative each reporting period. And as the, those as those are submitted, it will keep a history of your status reports and even snapshot that data so you can do trending reports. And people can either look at them in here or you can put them out to popular formats for people like PDF or Word or just in the body of an email. The idea there is, is that we can do reporting there, we can look at the insights for this particular project as far as things that require our attention. We could also look at um, um, uh, a dashboard in Power BI that is particular to this uh, project. Instead of looking at it overall, we can be looking at things that are specific as far as dashboards for that are project specific pieces of data. We have a whole slew of these things that are appropriate for those. And then also the visualization that we talked about earlier on when I showed it to you from the idea. We can see that there's no real dependencies on this project from a, a precedence logic perspective, but we can see that it's related to a lot of things. For example, it rolls back to four different key results that are rolling back to three objectives or organizational strategies. And we have to factor in thinking about two different products, an application, two different business capabilities, and two different value streams. So the idea is that these things are all interrelated. Okay. Now, as I go in here and I go into the uh, I can easily go back to the portfolio or I can switch to other plans that I have access to very readily right from within this plan. So let's say, for example, I want to drill into the project for the web plan. As I go in here and I go into the, the, the work plan for that, you can see that I have a work plan in one plan format in here. But unlike the prior work planner project that I showed you, this one is actually lively connected to uh, project for the web. And it's synchronizing that on an automated basis without the end user even having to remember to synchronize it. You can do on-demand import export on these things. But as I look at it, that particular plan I'm looking at in one plan, which is rolling up into the portfolio, is now available to me. And I can get to that plan right here uh, connected to one plan. And it's this particular plan that's synchronizing to that data over in Project for the Web. Okay. Now, if I was going to look at this from another tool perspective, uh, let me go in and look at another plan. Another plan that I might want to look at next is into the Microsoft Planner. So if I go down to MS Planner and I go into the work plan for that, I can go directly to any aspect of that that I want and just jump to those things as I see fit. In this particular case, I can see once again in one plan format, the elements that are in here. And this one in particular is actually connected to a planner plan. And as I go to open that item and it uh, references that, you can see that it is actively connected to this particular plan. And with all the things that you do in Planner from these board views and group by buckets or group by you know, progress or whatever other views that you might want, that plan is now fully connected and rolling into the portfolio uh, in one plan. Um, maybe another plan that we might want to look at is um, Project Professional. We talked about that, right? Um, so let's say I want to switch to a plan and I want to look at uh, the work plan for IT Project Professional. And we'll see another plan. They have the same look and feel once they're in one plan. But in this particular case, this one is actually uh, connected to Microsoft Project Professional on the desktop. And if I go to open this particular plan, you can see that um, uh, as it opens, it's in the desktop client. It opened the plan for me, and here comes the data. And this is the source of what we see over in one plan. So in this particular case, if I look at what's here in one in in in, in Microsoft Project and see that we actually have a connector uh, already plugged into Project Professional, so that we can publish this data out at any given point in time, and we can also receive updates back into this plan from updates people made from within one plan itself. I think, uh, let me do one other. Let me do uh, Azure DevOps. And if I go into another plan here, 
And let's go into the Azure DevOps work plan. We have a plan that's connected to Azure DevOps here. And as I go into the work plan, uh, a little bit different here is that this plan, since it's an Agile plan, is actually built in the backlog work type rather than the schedule work type. And notice I've got features, user stories, and tasks in here. And this is connected to a, an actual um, uh, Azure DevOps epic in this particular case. And if I go to open this up in Azure DevOps, you'll see that this is the plan IT Azure DevOps at this date is coming from. And it's grabbing the details from the child elements, whether they be the features or the user stories or the tasks that are associated with this particular epic. Now, with the Fused UI, this is a good place for me to show you that you could access the one plan capabilities right in here from within Azure DevOps. Or for example, if I look specifically for elements that are around this particular epic that are in one plan, I can see what's both been synced over there into one plan, as well as look at the capabilities that one plan is supplementing Azure DevOps on, which it doesn't do, right? But I can access it all right here from within Azure DevOps. So that work plan shows me what's already been synchronized over there, but things like the resource plan, things like the financials, things like the detail page that I showed you, and even the reporting, things like the status reports and the visualizations, all those things are available and we can use them without ever leaving Azure DevOps. So we do the same things with Jira and Smartsheet and some other tools as well. So the idea is that you can bring this stuff into the mix, but definitely with the Microsoft suite of tools that are there, the combination of Planner, Project for the Web, Project Desktop, really strong at that. And we have a lot of, a lot of runtime working with those. Now, as we bring this stuff all together, you know, the resource dimension of this, I showed you a resource plan within an individual project. But as we start looking at these resource plans, for example, they aggregate up into a central resource capacity plan. So in this particular case, let me say I have developers. And in these developer roles, I have some generic developers still assigned and I have things assigned to specific developers. And let's say, for example, I was looking at here and I have intake where I haven't really put a name to some of this stuff yet. And let's just say I wanted to go into this product launch. Uh, and I said, you know, I gotta get a developer assigned onto this. So who would I use that? I can look at candidates and look for best matches or very specific criteria. But in this particular case, I can see who's already allocated, who has remaining availability. And I can see in this time frame that I need the product launch, it looks like Oscar Martinez has green or remaining availability that I could tap. And I can just go and replace him on that generic assignment and make him the resource on that particular plan. I can do the same thing with over allocated people. I can replace people with another and do that very seamlessly within here and look at this from a variety of fashions, okay? There's a lot more detail around the resource planning capability that we don't really have time to go into the nuances today. Um, I would also say that as we look through value added capabilities, I think the key here is about being able to evaluate alternatives. And the modeler in one plan allows you to do just that. Um, I'll give you a high level view of a, um, you know, a, a model where you selected some candidate projects, both existing and maybe proposed projects in here that are gonna be part of this model or this scenario that you want. And then ultimately, um, you, what you would do is you would select what was in and what was out to meet different criteria. So let's say, for example, I was trying to get all these things down to a $10 million budget. And I can set those thresholds in here. And as I evaluate and do these selections, I found that there was 17 plans in and 16 that were out that weren't selected, okay? Um, as I go through that, I can go and look and say, all right, um, what is the financial aspect of that that we, we looked at here? And I can see which projects that we selected are contributing in to keep this under a $10 million budget as we go through here. Um, we could even go in and look at a timeline and whether or not we select a project to be in or out, we can do other things like maybe look at this timeline and say, if I needed to get more dollars out of this scenario. I could say, what if I took this proposed project and move it into Q1 of next year to get it out of this year's budget? In that particular case, you'll see dynamically the dollars change down below here, and we can save incrementally to this scenario, or even save it as an additional scenario that we can do com comparisons against. We can even look at the resource dimension of this and say, is this doable not just from dollars, but from people? And as we evaluate the alternatives in this, what if I can see I've got mostly green in here, so I've got a pretty good chance of making this happen. This is not a bad scenario that fits both within financial and budgetary and resource constraints. 
Um, and we could also then compare and say, for example, we wanted to look at a $12 million budget. Then we can look at that budget, look at those same parameters, but also notice I can do 23, I can do six more projects with two more million dollars if I went through that. And I could also look at what we call an analyze capability and compare the two uh, scenarios. So for example, the benefits that I outlined in here, it looks like the $12 million budget, I can possibly get $12 million more benefit for $2 million more of investment. It might be worth my while to go try and pursue another $2 million worth of funding. And we can look at all kinds of details. We can compare the scenarios at a very detailed level as far as what was in and what was out and how things were prioritized in the different scenarios, et cetera, okay? We also have the traditional bubble charts. So those of you used to seeing those and seeing, okay, here's the things we selected, and you can fashion a variety of views on this, but this one's looking at prioritization score versus benefits. And I can see that all the things are in the upper half uh, that I selected of the prioritization score uh, and varying amounts of benefits. I can even factor in what are the things that I didn't select and do a double check. Is there some things in here that I should have picked that I didn't, okay? And those are available to us, as well as using that visualizer capability in here just like we do when we're doing our normal project management and portfolio management. And I can actually analyze, here's the plans that are in, here's unselected plans that are dependent on them. It can give me another thing to factor to potentially change my mind or augment my scenario. So once again, a lot of different capabilities and even the full relationships we have to all other things in the, in the environment. Um, to wrap up on one other thing from a portfolio management perspective on that enterprise architecture piece I talked about, it allows us to align, just like you saw in that visualizer, with different product portfolios, business capabilities, applications, or any other portfolio you'd like to put in this kind of enterprise and business architecture area. And we can associate and align them with projects and other things within the solution, okay? Um, I will say that Sophia, our AI assistant, is available to us um, all throughout the system. And I'm just going to do a very simple case right here to show it to you because it's always present here in the lower right. And Sophia comes up and I'm right here in an ideas area in a prioritization view. And I think what I want to do is I want to ask Sophia a simple question and just show you how that would work. In this particular case, I'm going to ask, you know, based on priority and ROI, what three projects should we approve first and why? Out of all the mix of things that we're looking at, uh, let's figure out, you know, what it is. So, so Sophia's thinking about it and will give us some analysis. So here it's given me not only its selection based on the metrics, but it's also given me the rationale and the explanation as to why it accepted, uh, made these the top three. So not only was it the prioritization score and the metrics, but also the potential for market growth and long-term benefits of this type of project, for example, for the organization and other things and other factors. So once again, this is just one example of getting an example of how we can get an assist of how we can sort through a bunch of different aspects of ideas and requests and maybe get some hints as what may be the most optimum things for us to select, okay? I would say I'll close on the demo part by saying on the team member side of things, just be aware that a team member can go all into one place and see everything that's been put on their plate, whether they be issues, backlogs, uh, tasks, other things like that. Um, even beyond what we saw today in the in the uh, in the planner demo, if you want to expand that, you can actually update that those all things here by an individual team member, as well as if you have time reporting capabilities, we have timesheet capabilities built right into one plan that allows you to meet your time reporting needs, where you can report the time and even track how much of the time you've been allocated has been charged already before you charge yet another hour. Full reporting, full uh, uh, approval processes, etc. Alrighty, so with that, let's go back to the slides and try to wrap up here. So in summary, we talked about how Microsoft is in the process of reimagining and combining Project for the Web and Planner. That Microsoft really with this is focusing more on getting more into the collaborative work management area on this and really focusing its attention and development there. One plan we showed provides a platform that extends the new Microsoft Planner and the existing tools to provide full PPM, project and portfolio management, SPM, strategic portfolio management capabilities to fulfill fully on that enterprise work management landscape that Microsoft defined. And one plan integrates with other solutions and tools as needed. Now, one plan is delivered from the Microsoft Cloud. It's delivered in that secure Microsoft Cloud. 
And one plan also as an organization provides the solution services, migration support, and other support to help ensure customer transition value and success. So hopefully we demonstrated those things to you today at a high level. Now Microsoft has consistently recognized one plan as a global PPM leader. For five consecutive years, we've either been the winner globally of this award, or we've been the finalist in these five years. And not only that, we've been recognized by the analysts like Gartner and others in Infotech Research, Software Reviews, for our work and thought leadership in these areas. Now we do webinars like this all the time. Um, we have uh, at oneplan.ai slash webinars a whole roster of um, um, pre-recorded videos uh, that we've done on other webinars that you can go look through. And as new ones come about, they'll be posted up there. Um, uh, we're currently working on what our next series is going to be, but keep an eye out if you want to see other topics up there. There's a rich set, rich library of those up there. Now, you can trial one plan. You can go out there and go out to oneplan.ai slash solutions, or they're even available up on Microsoft App Source. And the full functional one that has everything in it, including the enterprise architecture stuff, is the strategic portfolio management. And I'd recommend either that or the adaptive portfolio management if you want a full breadth trial of the solution. So ultimately, you can get a trial. Um, we'd, we'd actually be happy to give you a free roadmap workshop to kind of talk about where you're at, where you'd like to go. Uh, and what it might take to get there, both from a um, effort and a cost perspective, you may already own a lot of the things that you need. Um, and then if you're not quite there yet and you wanna see more details, we're happy to schedule a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo with you. Just reach out to us at contact at oneplan.ai or research us more and just look up a little bit more about this at www.oneplan.ai. So with that, we've pretty much filled up almost the whole hour. And uh, I just wanna thank you for taking time out of your valuable day. One plan, we like to think about the convergence of all this stuff into one plan as the power of one, bringing everything to one hub, uh, mitigating the problems we have with fragmented and siloed information within organizations and processes. So we would really would like to engage with you. Either reach out to the contact us email, or you can reach out to me directly if you like. Uh, you will be getting a copy of these slides, and you will be getting a link to the recording if you want to view this again. So anyway, thank you, and have a great day.